Hello, once again, let's talk about media and communication. In this episode, we discuss the anti-vaccination movements in Germany and in Brazil. Okay. Together with our guest, Adriana Amaral, she's from the Unicinos University in Brazil. We're going to look at how uh, this, uh, these movements use social media to spread misinformation and also to uh, defy, challenge social cohesion. We're also going to address with Ariana uh, the differences between the two movements and how in Brazil, uh, this stronger politicization of vaccines has led to a more polarized debate in Germany. Adriana, welcome to our episode. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Adriana, let's jump into why you found, you and your colleagues, found this topic worthy of researching about. Um, well, uh, we had this research project um, between Germany and Brazil, and we were looking for this information in digital platforms. But uh, we, we had another grant uh, specific for... Um, from the DFG from, from Germany that was specific to discuss how social media were being spread, uh, the, the vaccination campaigns were being spread in Brazil. And then we start to look at it. And in our first uh, findings, we thought, oh my God, that's been this, this uh, big anti-vaccination movements. And then we decide to, to contextualize it with the, the German situation also because it was different, but in a way that has some, some kind of similarities. Mm -hmm. And so we start to look at it. Uh, but you, you told me, uh, so there was some research before about this topic. There was some uh, surprising uh, elements that you just found. Uh, but considering previous research, let me know what were your expectations. So before we jump into the findings, what were you and your colleagues hoping to find? First, because we saw that Brazil uh, was very known because of the high levels of vaccination before. And, and during the pandemic, we saw that this, this anti-vax discourses and narratives were growing and faster, and especially on Twitter, uh, Instagram. And in Germany, uh, we saw that the, the disinformation were more were less polarized because they have some specific groups that were more connected uh, with uh, anthros anthros <laughs> anthrosophy, <laughs> anthroposophic, movement sorry and with some movements uh, that there were no in a way they were not so political they were more like people thinking about uh, that um how can i say that people that are like oh natural style of life or veganism so it was very different from the situation we had in brazil mm -hmm. and so the the disinformation uh, was spread in the same platforms but in different ways mm -hmm. so different um same platforms more polarized in brazil than in germany so let's explore the findings now so then we started to, so we had this long uh, work of gathering and collect all the data during three or four months. And we started uh, just right when the vaccination started in Germany, that was a bit before, and in, and in Brazil a little bit later. And then we discovered that in Brazil, almost all the spread of this information have been uh, have been uh, organized by Bolsonaro supporters or people who were in contact of the government, and there were politicians and deputies and senators, and also um also people from 
th that was most unexpected. People were from the health uh, field, especially some doctors, some medicals so, uh, that were spreading this anti-vax discourses. And they were discussing about chloroquina, that, mm -hmm. is, it, that is this pill. So it was very weird. <laughs> And in Germany, it it was not uh, it was a movement very connected to some things about oh we have the rights to not get vaccinated, and in Brazil it was more this oh if you vaccinated you become a crocodile. <laughs> Bolsonaro said that so there are lots of. Uh, fake inventions mm -hmm. uh, about uh, vaccines mm -hmm. and in Germany it was more something connected to oh we were worried this vaccination uh, uh, this vaccine was made very fast we don't know what is made of but some things were quite the same like the discussion that the vaccines would transform your DNA and this kind of stuff Okay. Yes. Um, and I, as I was uh, reading your article and you just told me, so these uh, anti-vaccination movements, they vary a bit in the context. Uh, some in Germany argue for more like the personal rights and in Brazil, even some health professionals and uh, Bolsonaro groups uh, that promote them. My question for you is because it got me curious to you, how can we explore potential um, policy impacts of this? Have you considered this in your study? Well, so in in another paper that is about to be published soon, we discussed about how the organizations, health organizations, were using these these digital platforms for information on campaigns, but on vaccination campaigns. But we we didn't see uh how can i say especially in brazil this worried at least on the other government of course because when we gathered the data it was still 2002 mm -hmm. and 2022 and so we didn't see this worry about uh policies mm -hmm. because brazil was known for his for its uh, strength on vaccination campaigns and dissemination of uh, of vaccination in all around the country, and we have high rates. We never had this anti-vax movements. It was quite new. Mm -hmm. So, in this sense, I think something uh, we should uh, address uh, is more policies on combating misinformation and also there is the part from the digital platforms mm -hmm. what what we're gonna do with this uh with governance of digital platforms with in some cases deplatformization so i think it's it's a mixture uh, that we have to do with this kind of policies mm -hmm. A responsibility that should be shared between politicians and the platforms um, yeah. for controlling the misinformation. What do you think, Adriana, um, after what you told us, what do you think researcher, researchers should look at now? So what's the future research? Uh, uh, comparing new geographies or new groups, uh, other platforms? So what, what should we look at now? I think all of these things, because when we started mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. this research, we didn't see any comparative. Mm -hmm. We we found some uh, lots of things on anti-vax movements, but more in the U.S., more in, in the global north, and so we we saw that there was this this lack in the field, mm -hmm. and also I have uh, I have been thinking about now about video and TikTok, because there's been lots of conspiracy theories that have been around on TikTok and Instagram. And all the digital platforms, they are kind of, with video, they are more difficult to research. 
because the API is closed and, and there is this also this problem with the digital platforms for for researchers that allow Twitter is closing. We don't know what is going to do uh, with Elon Musk mm -hmm. and all these things impact. So things that are from from a political side and from um, a marketing side and mm -hmm. from how these platforms are are ruling their their. I think it's it's a challenge. It's challenging to to be researching this this yeah. kind of things now, and maybe other movements because some people have been researching before, like people who believes in the flat Earth and this yeah. kind of things. But they we were thinking more uh, on the conspiracy theories, or they were more um, like an anecdote. Mm -hmm. So now we saw the impacts that were very very worried about this impact and i've been to fiocruz last year that is one of the places in brazil where they research and they did the, the they, they did the vaccine here and they they were saying to me the people from there that uh, it has impact in other vaccines not only in covid wow. but mm -hmm. for children and this uh, oh one last thing that i forgot the mm -hmm. last thing is that they are using this the uh, the people from the, the right the extreme right they are far right they are using it oh you're using vaccines for the children and it's not safe let's protect children creating a moral pan a panic for this and this impact is awful and it and it's getting in all social classes uh, it doesn't have to be a person who has not studied so people from university everywhere so it's kind of crazy of course, a spillover effect to other other fields, other vaccines, and other groups. Of course, other than adults. Um, do you have any materials that you'd like to share with uh, who's listening to us? Some additional materials for people to further explore the topic. Uh, well, I think that that there's a material that we have produced that mm -hmm. is more um, uh, more visual. And I can I can leave it <laughs> to you sure. to to distribute mm -hmm. because it's on a PDF that okay. we shared with the journalists and and we also are thinking about uh, the way people who communicate science has to treat this because it's it's another it's another thing that we have to consider mm -hmm. of course and for our listeners uh, this uh, material that Adriana recommended will be available if you are watching us on the Let's Talk About Media and Communication website. Uh, below the video, there will be this recommended material that Adriana just mentioned. Adriana, let's close this episode with a punchline. So if you could wrap this conversation in one or two sentences, what would it be? <sighs> Although hard, what would it be? Hard, hard. <laughs> Uh, I think that we have to be very careful with the information, especially information on health and vaccination uh, that we should consider it to take into our lives and to do this, the decisions of our, our health, our community, because uh, it's a it's a collective sense that we are missing that that's the importance of the social cohesion so and and these digital platforms uh, so they are not caring about that mm -hmm. i think that is the, the punchline perfect adriana it was a pleasure thank you very much okay thank you Again, for our listeners uh, if you are watching us on youtube you can um, visit our website uh, 
let's talk about media and communication where you can see uh, also this conversation, the recommended materials and the article that served as a base for this uh, conversation. You can also listen to this episode wherever you get your podcast. On your website, you can subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.